Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 12. In this tutorial we are going to create the ability to add in a visual question into your library of questions. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So as it stands right now, uh, I have a texture which may look familiar to most people. Obviously it's not the actual image because I don't want to risk any uh, copyright involvement here. Um, but you can do a quick Google search for any kind of image. I mean, if you want to do the same as I do, just head to Google, do a quick Google search for this particular image. You should know what it is, hopefully. Maybe, fingers crossed you do. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to add this into the scene and we're going to make it a visual question by where the question says, which video game series would you most likely see this? And then it displays on screen, maybe with a little jiggly animation. So let's get that onto our screen now and create a nice, quick, simple animation. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. And I want to have this in the center position. So anchor, center, position, zero, and zero. So it is center. I guess we could also probably move it down just a little bit to probably there, just so as we have room for the question itself. And let's drag and drop whatever image you've got onto the texture right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick little animation to get this moving a little bit. So right click create and folder and let's create an animations folder. Let's make sure we're inside it and let's rename this raw image to be, um, let's call it visual 001. So if you have more visual uh, aspects of your game, you just have two, three, four, whatever you would want it to be. So now let's click on the animation tab. And I think I mentioned it a long time ago in this series. Uh, if you don't have it, you just click the three little dots here, click on add tab, and at the bottom you can see animation. And you'll end up with this. Now this is very, very simple to use. All we need to do is click on create. And let's put turn anim. And then you'll be presented with this. What you need to do is click the record button right there. And this will turn red. That's indicating that we are in record mode. And now we can put physical values into all of this to make it animate in a cool and simple way. So what we're going to do is start at keyframe zero. That's the very first frame of the animation. So it ends up looking like this before it starts any animation. And we're going to be dealing with the rotation, which is right here. So we want it to start on 0, 0, 0. We have to make sure that we have a little node here to represent that keyframe as set. And what I always do is I overwrite whatever value I'm using with 1, for example, and set it back to 0. Same here, just to make sure, and here. Just to make sure that we do indeed get everything correct. So you see these little nodes here, that represents a keyframe. That means the animation will move to whatever we've put there. This all works in 60 frames a second. So it means that if we go to frame 60, this is one second later in the animation. And if you have your mouse over the Z or Z, you can kind of see the movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to, let's say to five, and then hit return. And then after another 60 seconds, uh, well, 60 frames, I don't know why I said 60 seconds, another one second, 60 frames. I'm going to set this back to zero. So that should be five, my apologies. So it should be 60 frames. So we're going from zero to 60. And then after another 60 frames, so it would be frame 120, if I could do math correctly. Uh, I'm going to set this back to zero. And now after another 60 frames, so frame 180, I'm going to set this to negative five. So it kind of rotates the other way. And now after another 60 frames, so frame 240, I'm going to set this back to zero. So it's back in its starting position. That means it can loop seamlessly. So once we've done that, I'm going to press that record button head back to project and you'll notice you have two icons here. One is the animation itself and the other is the controller. 
Now, we don't need to worry too much about the controller because we're not going to attach any other animations to this particular object. Uh, but make sure with the animation itself that you do have loop time ticked. So when we press play, we should see this animate like that. Cool. So now I'm going to select it and turn it off. So the trick to all of this is to make that display during the question which is relevant to it. So if we go and select our script and let's go to question generate, we now need to create another question. So because we're creating another question, let's add one more. Let's head down and let's copy this section here and let's place it here and we'll say which video game series would you see this? And we'll put A as uh, Zelda and B Halo, uh, C can be Mario and D can be Final Fantasy. Obviously the answer is C. So we need to add something a little extra here. We need to add in another variable which relates to that object. So we can say public game object visual 001 semicolon and down here before we change the actual answer to C in this case, we put visual 001.setActive true, semicolon, and save. Now heading into the answer buttons, we now need to make sure that we do turn off any visual aspects. Now, if you do have a lot of visual aspects, uh, visual questions, then you may be better off using an array. Uh, but in this case, because we've only got one, we don't need to worry too much about it. So I'm going to place that here. So public game object and visual 001 semicolon. And all the way down here, it just becomes part of the next question routine. So we could say visual 001.setActive false and save. So all we've really done here is we have allowed the script to display that object if indeed it needs to display, but no matter what, it will always turn it off just so as it can reset the entire script. So if we go to master control, we need to add in visual 001 over here, and then also down the bottom. And now let's press play and hopefully we can generate it. There we go. Which video game series would you see this? Obviously Mario. And it should disappear with the next question. There we go. Who is Luigi's brother? Mario again. Let's see if we can get it to reappear. And I tell you what, it's generating the same questions. It would help if I had a lot more in here, wouldn't it really? How old is the world? Billions of years. Come on, show me the question again. It really wants to give me the same question over and over. Like I say, if you've got thousands of questions, it's uh, it's not going to do this. It's because I have such small amount of questions. My knowledge is clearly limited. Ooh, 160. Will you just give me the question again, Unity? Come on. Stop giving me the same questions. Stop giving me the same questions, Unity. There we go. Which video game series would you see this? Let's go Zelda. So we've got the wrong answer. Doesn't matter. Oh, it's giving the same question again. So yeah, all good. Goodbye, there we go. Carry on. So that's how you can create a visual question. Obviously that's, it doesn't look perfect, but that's the mechanics of how you do this. Um, you would obviously need to take a little bit more time with it all and just make it look better and more visual. Obviously I've kind of rushed a little bit with this, but the general idea is that all of this, you learn the mechanics and you just go crazy with it and make your own cool, awesome game. So 
Next tutorial is going to be the last one. Uh, we're going to look at creating a splash screen, so like a little intro scene. I'm also going to look at a couple of other things and see where we get to and give you advice on where you would go from here development-wise. So until that last tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.